This is a CO2 canister that's going to lead CO2 into this. Now the thing with centipedes is they need to be knocked out, put to sleep in order for you to sex them. So this CO2 is going to feed in. The centipede is going to basically fall asleep. I'm going to pop it and um, we're going to see if it's a boy or a girl. The other way people do it is drowning. So they'll take cold water and they'll completely submerge the animal in cold water for five to 10 minutes until the animal basically gets knocked out. A little bit more risky though, because it just causes a lot more stress on the animal's body and can pose risks, especially if the animal is in pre-molt. Um, so this is the safest method to do it. All right, so what do we do first? So I'm gonna turn this dial and this dial is gonna lead CO2 right into it. So pretty quickly, you're going to see the animal is going to get into some distress, um, just trying to figure out what's going on, but it'll go to sleep pretty soon. So centipedes have a lot of control over all their many muscles. And when you don't put them to sleep, you have to put a lot more pressure in order to pop them. And that can pose risks such as prolapse. It can harm the actual exoskeleton of the animal. Um, and overall, it's just a more risky process. Now is there like an indicator to let us know when he's ready? So I'm gonna take these tongs, give her a minute, and I'm just gonna kind of poke her. Those terminal legs, so those are the back two legs, those are gonna drop as she passes out. They're already pretty low, so we can take them. Oh, very much still awake. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. And they're going down. Oh, yeah, she's passing out. Give her a little bit. Now, how long do you know how long they stay passed out? So she's only going to be passed out for about a minute or two, and then she's going to wake up again. So I'm not even going to knock her out fully. She's going to be partially awake, and I'm going to be holding her behind the head. Mm -hmm. When you fully knock them out, you do risk death and other injuries to the animal yeah we don't want that so just to be extra careful we're not going to knock her out fully so pop out so that's a male so males have jonopods. So jonopods are two little spikes, very similar to hemipenes, but in centipedes instead. This is a boy, which is perfect because we already have one female. So now she's basically trying to attack me with her legs, but it's not, not going to do anything whatsoever. Oof. <sighs> That'll get the blood pumping. Yeah. All right. These are all Scolopendra dahani, or the giant Vietnamese centipedes. So these are one of the largest species of centipede that are readily available in the hobby. Now these are a unique locality. These are called Thai dragons, cherry reds. There's a few different names for them. The climb on my, sh my chest, isn't it? Oof, and we're off. Antennae start moving like that when they're about to go. The other one at least did that. Yep. Is that real? I mean, <laughs> yeah, so that they do that. That's just them trying to like get one last sense of what's going on. Because mm -hmm. um, it's just kind of like when a person goes under anesthesia, you know, you just start to feel droopy and then you're out. Um, so similar thing for them. So it's just them trying to figure out like, okay, what's actually happening here um, before they go out. <laughs> Oh, there's venom coming out, huh? He's just ready? Yep. And this is a very unpleasant bite. I have been bitten by these guys before. Not a fun time, believe me. So that's a girl. So you can see, no jonopods. Just nice, smooth. That is a lady.
Last but not least. Boy, there you go, perfect. Nice. All right, now put it in your mouth, no balls. <laughs> Wouldn't it be crazy? Oh, that'd be such a great video. How old are you, KJ? I am 16 years of age. Oh, uh, how are you even able to be here all the time? I don't know. Are you homeschooled? Yes. Are you really? Uh, yeah. That makes so much more sense. <laughs> Christ, I'm strong. All right, yep, dead snake, yep. Alright, why don't we let that snake look? <laughs> yes. Yeah, how did you smell that originally? <laughs> oh, okay. So, I was out in another state, and I'm uh, doing doing some stuff, and I happened to see, we, we drive by my, my buddies I was with, I was in the backseat, like, snake, snake! Back up, there's a corn snake, sitting on the side of the road. Kind of curled, like, weird, like, but it was still alive. I'm like, oh, it looks like I almost like got hit. Went over and looked at it. I picked it up. Animal was really stiff and just doing all sorts of weird stuff. I was like, wow. And I look at the animal and it's skinny, like V back. And I'm looking at its mouth and it, and it had a crust event. And I'm like, oh my God, the snake's sick. I'm like, I'm going to take the snake. I'm going to fix the snake. So I took the snake, brought it back, put it in a pillowcase and I brought it back, tried to offer it water. It didn't even really respond to water. And the snake, I was pinching it, wasn't dehydrated, but boy, did it look dehydrated and it looked like a mess. So. Next day, snake dies. It's really interesting. So a snake crawls out on the road just to die. And it didn't die from being run over. It died from illness. And so I'm going to show you the snake. There it is. This was a big, lovely male corn snake. So right off the bat, it's, can you see that? It's vertebrae that's a little, there's not, you don't have a lot of muscle right here like it normally would be. This animal would normally be a rounder and it's got like a V-back. V-back's bad. Yes. Secondly, oh God, it's already tracking flies. That's terrible. See this? So it had this crusty vent and it's a male. So as soon as I see that, so I see the crusty vent, well, gastrointestinal. So it means that likely there is a, probably like a protozoan infection which can cause this to get crusty. So amoebas, protozoa. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna try to fix this. And I was looking at the snake's mouth and the snake's mouth looked pretty crummy. Just looked, whatever. Ooh, uh, let's hold, let's try to, can you pull that up a little bit? What the hell is that, Kevin? Yeah, okay, so guys, this is what we call stomatitis. It's stomatitis and more. So I gave the snake water. I soaked it in some water and as it started hydrating, Everything started going bad. So, what happened to this snake? I didn't even get a chance to even try to fix it. So one thing I can tell you, the snake, it was along the coast. So there was, on one side of it, kind of brackishy water, open reeds and all that. And on the other side was a drainage ditch, which is fresh water, possibly a little bit salted. And then there's agriculture on that area. Um, one thing, there's a lot of cotton in that area. So maybe deductive reasoning is the use of herbicides like glycophosphates or something, or defoliant, or not the glycophosphates, it actually kills the plant by preventing the uptake of nutrients from the soil, I believe. But there are um, defoliants that actually cause plants to drop the leaves. So cotton, part of the process, they spray them with the stuff and then it causes all the leaves to fall off. It makes the water kind of reddish. I don't know if that is, but snakes in the wild get sick. I don't know if this is the product of humanity, but this snake is, this is coughing up all sorts of stuff. So mouth rot, there'd be more petechia, little blood vessels, a lot of raw, angry stuff. So if I actually, let me go wash this off. All right, so after I've washed off all of that, that's not mouth rot because this tissue 
it's still pretty healthy looking. And I don't see, I mean, I see some blood vessels that are purple. So what happens when the animal has a systemic infection, the blood vessels often become uh, dilated. There's extra circulation going on. They're flooding white blood cells to pay maybe a location or it's part of the, uh, the immune response. So this snake did not have mouth rot, but a lot of people would actually, when they're first looking at it, myself included, you actually would consider, hey, that looks like mouth rot. Mouth rot is often secondary to something else. So if I take the animal and I keep him in a cold place for a while, let's say like a ball python, over time you might start noticing all this gunk in the mouth. That means the immune response is not working because the temperatures are too cool. There's no immune response and the normal ambient bacterium and, and uh, maybe protozoa, all those things in their environment actually causing uh, the health of that animal to decline. So mouth rot is a symptom of something else that's causing stress that the animal's no longer able to manage. We could also have mouth rot where it's in an enclosure, rubbing its face against the screen top and it abrades its lip. Then you uh, open up these little wounds and then there's no immune response to help heal that and you get secondary or get bacteria, ambient, you know, coliform type bacteria that actually starts attacking that gram negative bacteria. Uh, but those can be conditions of a stressful factor in the environment. So mouth rot is often, you can cure it. If it's really severe, you have to actually cure that physical uh, tissue damage, but you want to uh, put it maybe on a systemic antibiotic, or you also want to make sure always you fix the parameters of the husbandry and you make sure temperatures. Temperatures are really critical and soaking that animal in shallow water, getting it naturally to bride and all that. There's a lot to it, but mouth rot could happen in the wild. You could find sick animals in the wild. I found, uh, we have snake fungal disease, Ophidomyces ophidicola, and I'm like the guy that pretty much discovered it. it took me 10 years to prove to powers that be, but that was essentially mouth rot too, is watching the animals where the entire lips were rotting off and it's really, really horrible. And that's actually a fungus. Hey, Patreon, we love you. Especially Deleach, Jessica Muller, and Pick Prince. You guys have been part of our Patreon for a really long time. We love all of you guys, but you know, these guys we love the most. They, they get extra attention. I gotta turn my camera on, dude. You didn't turn your camera on!